So just like uh, we mentioned about the modes of control, when you talk about the proportional control, then we are talking about, remember, what is our input and what is our output. So what is we have is the controller. So it means that our input is always the error and the output will be in terms of voltage. So we can talk of our input to be E and the output to be V. So in this case, uh, when we talk of the proportional control, just as we defined the modes of control, in the proportional control, we have an output that is directly proportional to the error. So proportional control produces a change in the controller output that is proportional to the error signal. And that is uh, what we say, what we mean is that there is always a fixed relationship between the value of the control variable and the position of the final control element. However, uh, the main disadvantage of uh, the proportional control is that it cannot always completely eliminate the error that is caused by load change. And that, is, that means that there, will, there is always an offset. And therefore, the, uh, the proportional control is, is always used when the gain can be made large enough to counteract the effects of large, uh, the, the effects of the largest load change and the proportional offset. Maybe we can represent this by use of the operational amplifier uh, uh, so that we can have uh, form an electronic controller that, uh, is proportion, that gives a proportional output in nature. So we have uh, that to represent the proportional. So there we can talk of R1. Then that is now the junction point where we have that. So in this case, we have can represent the O pump in that manner so that we have RF here. So this one is an electronic representation. And then, of course, we said that our input to this is the error E. Then the output is V. So that one is what we refer to as an electronic representation of a proportional control. Maybe we can look at very, very fast, we can look at the equations that guide this. So when you look at the equation that guide the proportional control, then we can see that uh, in this case, we can start by looking at the time domain equation. And from the time domain equation, so the time domain equation, so when you talk of the time domain equation, then we are simply talking about the relationship between the input and the output, whereby we can say the small v is equals to KE, where K is the proportionality plus V naught. The V naught here, in this case, this is the time domain output when error is equals to zero. That is at initial, in the, the initial uh, value when the error is equals to zero. So that is what uh, we have for the time domain equation. So when you take the Laplace transform of this, then we are going to obtain what we refer to as the frequency domain equation. And the frequency domain equation, frequency domain equation, frequency domain equation will now be, we usually write, the, when we change it from time domain frequency, the time domain equation to frequency domain equation, we can represent them in capital letters. So V is equals to KE, and the V naught will not be there because at Laplace transform, we usually say that we usually consider the initial conditions relaxed or the initial conditions to be zero. So that is the time domain equation. And we can ob obtain the transfer function from the same. We can talk of the transfer function, transfer function. So when you talk of the transfer function, then we are simply taking the output over input. And in that case, we can talk of V all over E is equals to K. So those are the most important equations that will be very, very important in analysis of a proportional mode of control. Maybe we can illustrate what these ones mean. And we can talk about, in that case, when you talk of a small v, then a small v here is the time domain output signal. This is the time domain output signal. And the time domain output signal, it is always given as a percentage. Then we have a small V naught. 
So this is uh, the time domain output signal when E is equals to zero. Time domain output signal when E is equals to zero. Or we can say when E is equals to zero. When E is equals to zero. And it is also given as a percentage. Then we have capital V. So the capital V will be the frequency domain output. So frequency domain output. We have the frequency domain output. And this is always also given as a percent. And in this case, we usually refer to this as Laplace transformed equation and that one means that the initial condition is zero so and that one we usually assume so this one is always when v naught is assumed to be zero when you assume this v naught to be zero so that is what happens then you can have small e the small e is the error domain uh, the time domain error signal so time domain error signal that is the time domain error signal and when we talk about uh, capital e that is the frequency domain error signal frequency domain error signal the frequency domain error signal then k is always given as the output that is output resistance rf all over R1, that is what gives us K, where RF is actually the output resistance in ohms, is the output resistance, and that one should be in ohms, and R1 is the input resistance, again, is also in ohms. So those ones are the definition of whatever we have been using in uh, the time domain equation, frequency domain equation, as well as the transfer function of that particular uh, system, or oh, that is the proportional control. So maybe we can look at uh, uh, an example very fast so that uh, we can see what it is all about. And look at an example. Uh, I can talk of, uh, you see. So an electronic controller, an electronic controller, an electronic controller uses a value, uses a value of 10 raised to power 4 ohms or output, so we can talk of this one as example. Ohms for output resistance RF for output resistance RF. Determine the value of R1 for a gain of 0 0.2. Determine the value of R1 for a gain of 0 0.2. Determine the value of R1 for a gain of 0 0.2. So in this case, what we are simply talking about is that uh, the solution here, solution, we have been told that K is equals to Rf all over R1, and we know what R1 is, and we know what Rf is. So in that case, we can say K, which we were told to be 0 0.2, is equal to 10 raised to the power 4 all over R1, which simply means that R1 is the same as 10 raised to the power 4 all over 0 0.2. All over 0 0.2, which if you do it properly, you are going to get 5 times 10 raised to the power 4 ohms. So that is a simple calculation on uh, proportional control mode. So that's a simple calculation on that. So let's look at another mode of control. This, the, the third or fourth is the fourth mode of control. Uh, that is what we refer to as the integral control. 
integral control. To talk about integral control. So when you talk about the integral control, then just like uh, the proportional, the, the mode of control that we are talking about now is such that uh, it is always determined, the relationship between it and, and the error. That is what determines uh, what type of control. So when you talk of the integral mode, co mode, mode control, then in this type of control, uh, the changes of the, uh, the, the, the ch it changes the output of the controller by an amount that is proportional uh, to the integral of the error signal. That is to say that the change of the controller output during an interval of maybe zero to t seconds is proportional to the net area under the error curve. And that is between zero and t as maybe we can illustrate here. So we can talk about uh, maybe a simple representation of this. So we can illustrate that. Maybe we can talk about this as the output V. Can represent output V. Then here we have 100. Then from there we have zero. Then let's say that that one represents constant. Then we have that. Then a little bit steeper. Then goes constant, down, and constant again. So this one will give, this one is given when you talk of the error. So let's talk of the error here. Maybe we can look at them at those particular points where there are changes in the graph. So that is what we have. So whenever we have that, when you integrate a constant just like that. So here we have error E. Here we can have zero. So when you integrate that, there will be no output there. That one, there is nothing. So when it is that way, it becomes a constant in that manner. Then it goes higher. There, it's nothing. So there is no constant. Then this one, it comes down. So that is the relationship of a graph for the error and also the output V as far as uh, the integral mode is concerned. So when you talk about the integral mode here, then we can always have uh, uh, an equation for the same. So the equations uh, that uh, we're going to look at is uh, for the integral mode. So we can talk about the time domain equation and also other equations for this purpose. So when we look at this here, then we can talk of the time domain equation. So when you talk of the time domain equation, when you talk of the time domain equation, then we can say that small v is given as one all over ti integral or between zero and t e dt plus v naught. And then when you talk of the frequency domain, that you are now, you take, convert it to Laplace transform, frequency domain, frequency domain equation, saying that one we can talk of, V is going to be given by one all over TIS, then the all of this one is multiplied by E. So we know that the integral will bring one over S if you write it in, if you change it to frequency domain, so that is where the, that S comes from. Then the transfer function, transfer function V all over E is going to be given by one all over TIS. So that is uh, what the transfer function will be. So if uh, the, 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 the symbols remain the same, like small V will still be the time domain equation, the other time domain output signal, V naught will be the time domain output signal at T is equals to zero. Uh, capital V will be the frequency domain output deviation. Small e will be the time domain error signal, while capital E will be the frequency domain error signal. And then at this case, there are some other equations that we will all be going to talk about. That is uh, T, I, will be given by Ri, Ci, uh, and that is the integration action time constant, that is what we call 
integration, action, time, constant, integration, action, time, constant. And then we have RI, which is actually the input resistance in ohms. Input resistance, and that one should be in ohms. Then we can also have, after that, we can have CI, which is the output capacitance in farads. In farads. And maybe we can have a representation of the diagram uh, for the integral. So, uh, open representation. So, if you talk of the open representation of the diagram, then for the integral, then we are talking about a diagram that looks like this. Talking about Ri. So we have Ri here. Then here, we have that. Then we have the open representation. Then here, we have Ci. Then it goes to that. Then of course, our input still remains the error while the output is V. So, because that is CI, that is RI, so that is what we refer to as the integral control. So we can talk about the derivative of diff control and then later on we can talk about the several combinations that are always used in this. So the several combinations that are used in this, uh, in, uh, and when we'll be looking at the several combinations, then we'll also be looking at why is it that, what is the disadvantage of using maybe the integral alone? What, the integral alone, maybe we'll talk about it uh, later on, but the main disadvantage of using it alone is always because it brings about oscillation. 